are piggyback ECU systems any good? Well, I think so, but the computer is the true test. So today I'm going to the dyno. I apologize for the wait in 2023. I have been ill with COVID and various other things. So first video back, I hope you enjoy it. I've also been working on my Hillman Imp. So have a look at that video afterwards. That is a really exciting project and I'm racing it for the 2023 season. Now onto the dyno. I'm here at SRD Tuning with both of my Yarai for episode two of the Power Upgrade series. So here is my cart going on to the dyno. We're going to baseline with this to see what they actually come out of the factory at because a lot of people have been getting 270 out, the more, so there's a wide variation. So we're going to dyno that and get a baseline and then we're going to work out what the best setting on the DTUK box is here. Hoping to get 320 out of it, so yeah optimistic and let me take you into the dyno. So the car is all strapped in now, the first one. Front and rear is its four wheel drive. So we are ready to go. It's positioned on top of the rollers and we have the big air blower at the front, obviously to simulate airflow keep the engine cool and then exhaust sort of chamber suction at the back the straps front and rear are both vertical and crossed because it's four wheel drive you can get a bit of torque steer and you want to basically make sure you use as minimal steering input as possible so you can get truer readings and it's easier and safer to do. A lot of the standard GR Yaris's have been putting out above the claim 260 from Toyota so it'll be interesting to see if this one is also above and if the DTUK has actually done what it said it would. All the fans and blowers are on and significantly louder than my car, hopefully not louder than the other. Cabin crew, doors to manual, we're locked down, strapped in. Oh, the wheels are moving. I didn't even realise I missed that. Now, before we get started, it's also important to understand the two different types of horsepower. You have the horsepower quoted most often by manufacturers, which is the more impressive horsepower at the crank. That's without drivetrain losses. So drivetrain losses is through your gearbox, as it goes through the hubs, as it goes through the wheels. And what we're measuring is horsepower at the wheels. Now, most people will say, as a rule of thumb, you lose around 15 to 20% of your horsepower in drivetrain losses. So what I'm going to do throughout the video is I'm going to add 17.5% the sort of midpoint of the extra horsepower so you get a figure that you're more used to. Generally when people say I've got this much horsepower they're talking about at the cranks not at the wheels. The horsepower at the crank is also the sort of true horsepower. It's what the engine is actually producing and then of course it's lost before the time it gets to the wheels and gets down onto the tarmac. So that clears up that disparity in what people are thinking. So on three separate runs, it's showing about 230 brake at the wheels. So the previous run was a little disappointing compared to other GR Yaris's. So we're now going for another run using a slightly different method where you hold the revs rather than increasing the revs and changing dyno resistance. So here we go, let's see if this is a bit more pleasing. All the power of a moped in reverse. Oh. So we've just taken the air filter out and this is our last attempt. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh. The air filter did make a difference, but now here comes the one that I have more hopes for. So that's our baseline. We know what the standard one does. So now on to the other one, which has intake, OPF delete, Miltec OPF back exhaust, and the DTUK tuning box. Here it comes onto the dyno. So before we get started, I thought it's important to understand what the hell I'm talking about when I'm talking about different programs. So let's look at the pad here. In the middle, you have P, you have one, two, and three. These are individual modes as a whole. These are your three main settings. So you have sport, you have dynamic, and you have efficiency. Those are the three main modes. And within those three modes, you have 
minus one, two and three, and plus one, two and three. And of course, plus three being theoretically the most power, and P1 is meant to be the most powerful setting overall. But every engine is different, and that's important to understand. So in theory, P1 plus three is the quickest, but keep watching to see if that's what we actually found out to be true. What you'll see is for each individual setting we tried out, we did two or three runs. And what I was amazed by, just by spending time at SRD, speaking to the tuners and the people that understand ECUs really, really well, is how much they talk about ECU learning. So you switch to a new mode, and the first run in that mode is generally pretty crap but the ECU is just learning. It's how do I interpret this new feed, this new information. It's telling me more airflow, less airflow. The ECU is constantly learning. And I thought that was something that was, you know, rev it once and boom, there you go, it's learn. And then it continues when you shift into the next gear. But it actually takes a little bit of time. It's constantly adjusting. So you need to do two or three runs. And as you'll see, they do perform differently throughout those runs. It's not a case of set and forget. It's set it, rev it, get it in different gears, different loads, different circumstances, cold, hot, and it will actually learn that setting. Air temperature also plays a big factor, but of course, in our room, that was a controlled variable. So I've just changed the setting on the DTUK box to P1 plus two. So in theory, this is meant to be less power, but really think of it as just a different mode. the settings on the DTUK theoretically the power's actually increased so I'm now trying program one plus one trying P1 plus 3. This should have a very different torque curve and a feel overall. So this will be an interesting test. What have we learned? Well, the theoretical best setting, which is P1 plus three, isn't necessarily the fastest. It will be on lots of cars, but it also won't be on others. For me, P1 plus two was the best setting. And in this setting, we got 269 brake wheel horsepower, which when we add the 17.5% additional drivetrain loss, that's 316 brake. I was targeting 320, so that's pretty good. And that's 34 brake more than the stock car with no air filter. So the best run we had on the stock car. And lastly, a huge thanks to SRD who were really welcoming. They talked me through the whole process. I learned a lot. I asked lots of questions. They were happy to help. I will be going back. So a huge thanks to SRD Tuning. Go and check them out now. I'll link their Instagram in the description. As I'm sure you know, these projects require a lot of time and effort. So please like and subscribe. It helps me out a ton and we're nearly at that thousand subscriber mark. So thank you everyone. Big things are coming when I hit that thousand subscribers. We're going racing. We're going to have some super analytical content where I can critique my own race craft, my own decisions, take you through what it's like to really race, organization, prep, the event, after the event, everything is all coming up.